Hi guys, welcome to Code Android. So today we'll uh, learn the new advanced series of uh, Kotlin and uh, also about the MVVM model or the model view view model architecture. In this series or in this topics, I'll explain you in parts like what are the topics we'll be covering here. Basically, we'll go through the view model and the MVVM architecture. What are the blocks, important blocks in it? We'll also go through uh, use cases. And uh, we'll also go through some dependency injections in the later part. For example, we'll be going through uh, the Hilt view model and also the uh, the dagger to versus Hilt and also coin the Kotlin's injection, which is already made by Google. So coin is also a little successful in this part. And we'll also know what the differences in coin and also that. So let's quickly jump in into the course. And uh, first of all, I'll explain you uh, what's a view model. So if you're seeing uh, here, you will be finding the view model scope. So the view model scope is something which is works on the activity lifecycle. On the activity lifecycle, you have the on create, on start, on resume, and then goes to on pause, on stop, destroy, create, start, resume, and again on finish. You can destroy the activity and entire lifecycle gets destroyed. And again, you uh, come back to your main activity and you can come back to on create again. This entire life cycle is maintained by the view model. What I mean by maintained is like your app doesn't uh, worry about the view model scope. So whatever you do in your uh, life cycle makes an example like you're rotating your screen and you're destroying the activity. You're changing it to portrait to landscape. So in that scenario, the life cycle is getting affected. In that scenario, the view model scope is not getting affected. If you're writing everything in a view model, the design is not getting changed nothing is getting rendered nothing is getting destroyed the rendering is smooth and there is no delay in the threads so the multi-threading is occurring in the view model scope here now let's quickly understand uh, why we use view model so view model works on a life cycle so that's using view model store owner which is a scope which disappears okay so we don't see this in our real life it's just a android's perspective of explaining the scope now uh, what we do is uh, when we write a view model so let, let me exam uh, explain you the blocks so i'll open my paint here now here uh, i'll draw you the blocks and i'll show you so first of all i'll put three blocks here and uh, i'll name this as model Okay, and for this, I'll name it as a uh, view model, and for this, I'll name it as a view. Now, what that does is uh, from the model to view model to view, so the data is coming from the view model to model. So, in that scenario, the data is coming like this, and Again, the view model is actually giving the view the data back. Here, the two things are occurring. The view model is actually sending the data and it's observing the life cycle changes. Okay. So let me just draw an arrow here and also this. this and this like this and like this so now here uh, whatever the view model is sending that's are the callbacks so you know callbacks right so we have done callbacks in our early in our previous tutorials callbacks are something like on success on failure whatever the response you're getting in view model that is being sent to the model and the model life cycle gets changed so the model sends the data back to the view model so here the two things are occurring simultaneously this data transfer is occurring here so i'll write this as data transfer okay and here once the data transfer is done the view model is updated and then it sends the data back so here the data streams are getting changed so whatever you are uh, getting here the business logic is in the view model that changes are occurring in the view and the view is getting rendered 
So that's very simple. This is the basic block of the MVVM model. So you should think it like that. You have a model, you have a view model, and you have a view. View is our activity. View model is the class of the activity. Model is the data layer. So data layer is something like when you get any JSON response. A JSON response is something that occurs something like, um, how will I say, uh, some data. And we have an array. And inside that array, we have something like an object. Inside an object, we have something like a name, which is of type string. Uh, we can have something like age, which is of type integer, maybe. And again, we have something like, uh, uh, what is it, employee or address, maybe, which is again of type string. So now, this is a JSON response of a list type. It's not an error list because we don't have multiple objects of list here. We have only one object and it's a type of a list. So this JSON response is a type of data. In Kotlin, we consider this as a data class or a data object class. So this data objects needs to be transferred to the view model after the data is getting transferred with the callback and then view model gets all this data and it what it does is it's like uh, it's taking the data and then it's doing its work so it there the business logic comes so all the business logic it's happening here whether you want to show the data or whether you want to just you know you know make the data visible to the user not visible to the user make the button click not click all these things are occurring in the view model after that uh, whatever the view is getting is from the view model so the new data and the, all the data changes are rendered in the view so our view is again the activity or fragment so this is how it works now let's go to our android and studio and just check how we can design our architecture so we'll do a new project here i'll take again as empty views activity and I'll mention this as something like um, MVVM project or something like that. And let the project build. Okay. So we have three types of. Uh, architecture models in android one is mvc one is mvp and one is mvvm so mvc is already you have seen uh, that we will learn in the last tutorials of our series the basic series mvp is presenter model we'll learn about presenter model a little bit in depth when you'll do the clean architecture for now we'll do the mvvm part so here um once it is loaded so we have to do some changes in the gradle also okay now that's our successfully project has been built so let's go to our gradle scripts okay first of all i'll just uh, show you so you need to go to your gradle here and go to your project level gradle here you need to do some changes so for the MVVM to work, so we need to add some dependencies again. So I'll write here uh, for MVVM lifecycle data dependency. So here we need to write uh, two dependencies. One is the Android dot lifecycle lifecycle extensions and we have the latest one which is 2.2.0 another one is implementation android x dot lifecycle and we have a life uh, we have a dependency named as sorry lifecycle view model yeah 
So we have a wave model KTX. We need that. We don't need the compose because we're not doing the jetpack compose. So for that, we can just leave that. And you can in, and can just uh, use this. So these are two dependencies. We need to do that. And let's now click on sync now here. Okay, so that's done. Now we have to come back to your directory here in the project. So here we need to do some changes. So we are not working with the MVC patterns. We'll not follow the same uh, package, uh, package, uh, packaging uh, directories uh, way. We'll change this. So we'll do a right click here, and we'll create three packages named as view. And again, we'll create one more package named as view model. And also we'll name as another one as our data or model. So anything that's up to you, what do you name it? So we have three packages here now. Now in the view, we'll have the activities or fragments. So inside that you can have one more package. We can name it as UI. And inside the UI, so one second, so I just, uh, okay. So we'll have one more package, uh, UI. Okay. So if you go to your, uh, if you want to check the exclusive packages you have created, you can just expand it using projects. So that will show you be in a better way. Okay. Now this activity, if you're seeing here, we need to be going here. So we need to just drag and drop this and you can click on refractor. So that will change its layer. Okay. So that's under the UI. Now the view model will be having the activities view model. So whatever we will be having here is a view model class. So we can create a class name, a costling class, anything we can name it as, uh, whatever the name of the activity, maybe we can name it as main activity for now to understand. Uh, that will be named as a view model class and will be a Kotlin class. So we have a view model here. And inside the model, we will have one more package named as data. And also here we'll be having one more package called network. So in this way, the structure is made. So again, uh, for the activity part where we want to show the render the views uh, we have to just write the view model observers now the view model observers are basically the life cycle data or the live mutable data which we'll be seeing and this is this is the structure we have to make so uh, normally in mvc what we do is we have a controller class and a view and a model but here we don't have that so we basically follow this architecture design uh, you need to follow this developer docs for more on view model. So if you want to see what's a view model and uh, why we use a coroutine, we'll also come cover this on another uh, topic on another video of coroutines. So what are the dispatches we use in coroutines? What are the type of coroutines uh, scopes we use there? And also uh, the view models uh, which we will be doing is basically the observer class so if you can search on observers you will be finding that so observers like uh life cycle so if you see that and uh, if you go to handling life cycle aware components so i'll be putting the link in the description for this as well all these links you can have a look why we do the observers pattern and what is the benefit of observers so basically if you see observers have a life cycle as well so it doesn't matter if your uh, states are in destroyed or created observer always triggers first so in that way you can be assured like your life cycle is not getting destroyed in your interactivity whenever it's going to on start or on stop or on resume the life cycle is not getting destroyed so in that benefit we are using the observer life cycle patterns also uh, we'll be covering one more application on the next uh, video i'll show you one small example on coroutines and how we use the uh, retrofit libraries so retrofit is again like retrofit in android if you know about retrofit well and good if you don't it's just a library to 
just fetch data from the internet or any JSON response. So we use get, we use post, we use uh, put and all these types of interface request body. So we'll be using that to fetch some data here. So that's uh, one thing. We have other converters as well in Retrofit. So there are a lot of converters. The basic one is JSON converter, which converts the string into a JSON object. We have others like Moshi, Jackson, uh, Simple XML, where so those are used. So we'll be seeing how we do our, you know, the singleton pattern, how we use in our view model to fetch data and, and render it. So for this uh, video, uh, that's all. And uh, for the next, I'll be explaining you basically how we structure our application, how we do this uh, using MVVM architecture with a small examples on each of the topics. So hope you like this video. So do like, share, and subscribe for the next channel and uh, stay tuned for more. Thank you.